What's going on guys? What's cracking this morning here? I had someone actually come up to me and kind of repeat that, which I didn't realize how much I did it until I started going back to my videos and realized I did it a lot. We've got a couple things to go over today. Uh, we've got to work on the super here. Uh, I got to test out the IET sensor on it here. So the one in it is giving me like some weird feedback. So this isn't an ideal setup. If you guys will see this here, this is actually a eighth inch MPT into a three eighths, I want to believe, uh, MPT setup. So I have in it now welded in a 3 8 MPT plug, right? Uh, but the sensor is giving back like a weird reading. It keeps going up and down. It's hunting real badly. So my old 8th inch, I found an adapter from Lowe's, and I'm going to try this. Now, it's not going to be perfect. It's probably not going to read perfectly either, but at least test it to see like, hey, is this the issue or is it the wiring? What is it? Um, so that's the first thing we got to do. Also today, guys, I've got one of these. What this is, is an OBD2 reader from Carly. What this allows you to do is, well, wirelessly read OBD2 codes off of your car, which is pretty freaking sweet. Um, this is actually available for iPhone and Androids. Cool little thing. Uh, if you guys know, I'm always clearing codes on my car because I'm always modding them and always doing stuff. So I'm always popping up codes and doing stuff like that. So this is a pretty neat little tool. I'll show you guys here in a little bit. So stay tuned. This is very, very neat. But first for the super here, I'm not sure if I should remove the battery or not. I could probably get that unclipped. It's just getting a tool in there to loosen that up. It's just the way I had designed it makes it kind of a pain in the butt to get in and out. Uh, so let's see if we can get a tool down in there uh, to get that undone. And then I got to change out the wiring too. But I have an expansion harness for the MPT, uh, for the 8th inch MPT. But I had cut off the fitting. So I have to recrimp this with some Deutsch connectors. I think I'm saying that correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I'll have some Deutsch connectors for the end of the wiring here. But I only have one. So I got to find another one somewhere in my parts bin here. All right, guys, so I've got one pinned here. The problem is I don't have another pin. Uh, I'm trying to source one locally right now, but yeah, I don't have another Deutsch pin. I, I hope I'm saying that correctly. I don't have another one right now uh, so I can get this done. And I originally cut the old pins off this connector harness because I was going to repin it to use it with my new 3 8 I think that's what it is or whatever it is. Three, I have no idea, but whatever. I was going to use it with those pins and then Jose Kaiser Motorsports has said, I'll just send you a new one. So then I just kept this just in case and now I need to repin it. And yeah, so I don't have any more Deutsch connectors and I need some. So hopefully someone locally can get me some ASAP. All right guys, so Ben Caliber of Caliber Transmissions was nice enough to hit me up. Uh, he's got some pins in town here. I'm gonna go grab those real quick here. Uh, we got the boys here behind me. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go over there real quick, slide through there. Maybe he'll let me record, I don't know. If you know who Ben Caliber is, he owns Caliber Transmissions. He builds some of the fastest Mustang transmissions in the country between the get track transmissions for the Mustang GT up to the T56 Magnums and TR6060. So let's go ahead and head over there. So I went ahead and got the pins from Ben Calamer here. Uh, big shout out to him. I appreciate him giving those. So I went ahead and pinned this. Uh, ben over here uh, is helping me get the old harness out. So he pulled that out. Now what we have to do next is get out the 3.8 sensor. Uh, one thing I want to mention, guys, is driving this home here, the car was acting real funny. It was adding a bunch of fuel, then going real lean and adding fuel. And I was watching the IAT sensor go from like, Negative hundred and negative sixty to like hundred and eighty degrees, like it was going boinkers, and it was making the car act quite weird. So I'm hoping this fixes it. Uh, if not, we've got some serious underlying issues. All right, guys. So we did get that sensor in. We took it for a drive here. Ben rode with me here, and um, so we've got some problems, boys and girls. We're not sure what it is, and I've got another new issue now. The car is adding fuel, a ton of fuel on startup and then like when you come off decel and like go to idle mode, it's adding a ton of fuel and then it's working its way up slowly, which wouldn't be bad, but it's sitting there for like 15, 20, 30 seconds with an 11 0 air fuel ratio, which is like more than what it should be at wide open throttle for me. Not good, not sure why it's doing it. I don't know if I have a stuck injector, but it is working itself back up. So the only thing I think of is the ECU is trying to make up for it. I don't know if I can go into ECU, which I guess I could here and see if any of the injectors are getting more pulse than the other ones and it's actually working harder or if it's truly just stuck open. I, I don't know at this time. Uh, and I don't know enough to check something like that. So that's something I need to look into. All right, guys, so since I can't find another connector, let's go ahead and dive into this OBD2 scanner from Carly. Um, I'm pretty excited about this because I'm always using these darn things. So first thing you're gonna do is download the app. Now, each app is dependent on your style car. For me, it's a Toyota. So you just open up the app, and then you'll need to choose the car. Uh, for me, we're gonna test it out on the Corolla today, and you'll have to check out the model. So I went Corolla XE, gasoline, you choose the year, and then go to shop. Okay, now we're inside the app, guys, and there's a bunch of parameters and everything. So what we're going to do here first before I go through all this, let's go ahead and plug in the adapter to the car itself. 
Alright guys, we're in my 2017 Corolla right now. What we're going to do is insert this into the OBD2, OBD2 port uh, of the car, which is down below here. If you can see, there's a port right here you stick this into. Once you've stuck in the adapter itself, what you're going to want to do is go to your Wi-Fi settings in your iPhone. Uh, for me, it's the Carly adapter pops up. You want to select that, and then you want to go back to your app. So once we're in the Carly app here and we're going over a couple things, one of the first things we'll go over, uh, the car's still again on the on position. We'll still go to so some of the OBD live values. Now first thing you'll notice here, it'll pop up like if you want to use, continue using the basic version or if you want to go to the full version. I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys go to the full version. Uh, it allows you so many more parameters, logging parameters, especially while driving, uh, especially if you're a tuner like me uh, and you're a tuner guy I should say and you're working on your car and you can't diagnose an issue, this will let you actually physically record all the sensors on your car like you would with a standalone ECU. Pretty intuitive, pretty neat. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go continue to live values and it's going to start recording. Uh, it's going to start reading the ECU itself to try and get anything or see what could be possibly wrong. So once you get that, guys, it allows you to choose each bank here. Um, so you click any one of those and you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, this last one here, I'm going to change it to timing advance and it'll let you see like right now, engine RPM, coolant, throttle position, uh, bank one for your catalyst. So it's a O2 sensor there and your mass flow rate. So let's go ahead and turn the car on. Now that I have the car running, let's go ahead and start readout. Like it's showing right now when the car started, the throttle position center was 18%, engine coolant's at 17, 17 degrees Celsius, showing the engine RPM right now. It's trying to give you live data, which is just so freaking cool. And then you can check the dashboard when you're done. So what you can do is hit stop logging. The car's still running. Go check the flow rate, and we could change it to something else. But it just gives you an exact readout what your ECU is doing at this time. Again, I can't recommend this thing enough. This thing is very, very, very cool. I will list it all down below, guys, where you can get it at. Um, if you need any help, shoot me a message. But I highly recommend getting one of these OB2 sensors. Not only does it clear codes, but this car lets you literally do everything and then some. It's almost like having a little, uh, little standalone ECU right by your side. But now back over to the Super here. I got to play with it a little bit more. Uh, we went out to Mexico last night and I got to play with it a bit more. The car is still trying to randomly add fuel. I'm not sure why, if it's the O2 sensor or what, uh, but it isn't, it isn't running perfect. And I'm not all too sure why. Uh, the O2 sensor seems to be, I shouldn't say O2 sensor, I apologize. IET sensor seems to be reading properly now um, after we took it apart, put it back together. It seems to be okay. I am actually using the 3 8 uh, IET sensor again, uh, and I put back away my 8th uh, inch MPT. So I guess whatever disconnecting and reconnecting it did fixed it. I'm not really all too sure why it did, um, but it did. So I'm happy that it's working for right now. The next thing I'd like to do is figure out why the car wants to run so rich at like idle and like even like tipping in right now, it's adding too much fuel. I'm not sure if there's a way to see if I have a stuck injector or what's causing it to happen. Obviously I can read my map. I have fuel pressure there. Fuel pressure was good, but I don't know if I can check the injector duty cycle um, or injector pulse. If it's giving it too much pulse on one of the injectors, something's causing it to flood out because I don't want that issue. Car at wide open throttle and driving seems to be okay, but it's not as smooth anymore. The car doesn't feel as refined as it once did. Uh, I don't know if that's because I'm finally getting down to my actual 93 octane limits. Uh, I don't know if John made some changes to change something that caused it maybe to do this or the fact that we upped fuel pressure. Um, we upped fuel pressure. I'm not sure if that caused any issues. It might actually, uh, I don't know. I, I honestly, I have no idea. And for right now, I'm not going to be going to uh, E85 uh, anytime soon. So. I maybe I should back down the fuel pressure down to like 40 some PSI or wherever it was at before. So thank you guys very much for tuning in today. I know there wasn't a lot in this video. It was kind of a up to date kind of video and I did a little bit there with the Carly app again guys. Uh, if you want to know more about it, look down below in the comments. I've got everything listed there for you. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. Uh, next thing we got to do is I'm having some issues with the shifter. You guys will see that in the next video uh, when I get some extra time here. Uh, it seems to be coming loose. If you guys know anything about the T56 Magnum, these sicky shifters always seem to come loose and I think mine's starting to do it. Uh, so I'm going to go walk through that and see what's going on. Uh, and see you guys step by step through it and see if it's actually coming loose or if I'm just going crazy. All right, guys, again, thank you very much for tuning in today. You know what to do. Facebook, Instagram, the website. Go check it out. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.